Hey, little moment, Shire folk. I'm Ben. And I'm Matthew. And in today's video, we are going to give you a long awaited update on our new event, Fay Haven LERP. So, in our last video, we gave you guys an introduction to our new event, Fay Haven LARP. We've been putting a ton of time and effort into that event over the last few months and want to give you guys an update on how that's going. Shortly after our last video, we started doing photo shoots for each of our playable cultures and releasing those every month. We started off with the halflings, and then the elves, the gnomes, and then the humans, and then we had a uh, the sub-faction for the humans, that is the king's guard. Um, and then we finished it off with the dwarves. And last fall, we also hosted a new event for us called the Hobbit Hoedown. That was a blast. It is a Hobbit-themed dance and party. And we're also having another one of those on May 11th called the Spring Hobbit Hoedown. So as a little uh, sidebar, if you're interested in that event, go check that out. It's going to be super fun. But yeah, after that, we started putting a lot of time and effort into writing the rule system for Fayhaven and information on the world and the lore and the event details and scheduling and all that stuff. And all of that was put onto our website called fayhavenlarp.com, which was released a couple months ago. So instead of having a super long video where we talk all about all those details, let's take a look at the website and navigate through uh, some of the different links and pages on there. So it'll be easy for you guys to go and find that information. All right, so starting on the homepage of our website, we have some details about the date and the location of our event. The event will be held from October 4th to October 6th, 2024 in Wilmington, Ohio, and ticket sales will be coming soon. All right, Ben, why don't you give us your best dramatic reading of the Fayhaven homepage? All right, I'll do my best. <clears throat> Fayhaven LARP is an immersive fantasy experience held in the Midwest. When you step into Fayhaven, the real world falls away, the fantastical becomes real, and you become a part of an epic story connecting the lives of characters across a magical world. Fayhaven is a place where whimsy, adventure, and peril collide to create an experience unlike any other. So yeah, other than that, uh, the homepage also has some information to the various social links, like our Instagram, where you can see a ton of the cool pictures we did in that photo shoot Matthew mentioned, as well as our Facebook group and our Discord. Definitely want to encourage you guys to jump in the Discord if you guys are interested in joining this event. There's a bunch of people in there that are really enthusiastic and will help you out and you know give you great answers to questions, and you can update people on projects you're working on. Super fun community, so definitely encourage you to jump in there. There's also a place where you can uh, provide your email address to sign up for updates and news regarding Fayhaven. All right, so next let's go to the World tab in the menu and click on World Overview. So this is the best place to start to get some information about the world of Fayhaven, and it starts off with a map of the continent Enon and then it gives some information on the history of this world and the creation of the Gristwood and consequently the creation of Fayhaven, which is this safe haven within this cursed forest. After looking at the world overview page, we can click on the cultures tab and that will take us to a page where there are links to each of the cultures that we mentioned earlier. We have the dwarves, the halflings, the gnomes, the humans, and the elves. Each of those have a ton of information, so let's go ahead and click on the dwarves. For each of the culture pages, we start out with a little introduction to that culture, and then we have these cool little drop-down menus where we have society, beliefs, history, physical attributes, traits, values, and naming conventions. Each of those dropdowns have a lot of information and you'll definitely want to read all of those if you're interested in joining that culture. Scrolling down beyond that, we have the costume guide, the Pinterest board, and the Spotify. The Spotify is a music playlist for that specific culture. The Pinterest is a board of pictures for inspiration related to that culture, and then you have the costume guide. The costume guide is very important, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. At the beginning of each of the culture costume guides, we have a blurb here that explains that 
all costumes for Fayhaven need to be submitted to staff and approved. One of the things that we value a lot in this game is immersion. So we want to make sure that all of the players are maintaining a certain standard of their costume and garb so that we can be fully immersed in this fantasy world. Next, it discusses the aesthetic influences for this culture, has a lot of information there that is very helpful when building your costume. After that, we have a list of pre-approved items. So we have shirts, tunics, tabards, pants, coats and cloaks, hoods, hats, dresses and gowns, armor, weapons, shields, a lot of information there. You can click on the drop downs and get a bunch of links to specific products that are already pre-approved for that culture. So if you don't know where to start, then you can take a look at some of those and you can build an outfit straight up from those links or they can just give you a better idea on what we're looking for for that culture. So again, there's one of these pages for each of the five cultures. And if we go to humans, you will notice that there is also information on the Kingsguard. Like we mentioned before, the Kingsguard is a sub faction of the humans. They are really cool. There's a lot of information on them. And so underneath the human costume guide, there's also information about the Kingsguard. You can click on that and then read through what the role of the Kingsguard is in the world of Fayhaven and also get some information on the Kingsguard kit and their armor and some required items and things like that. Going back to the world tab on the menu, we can go down and click on the lore sub tab. So this is set up like a blog post format and this is where we will post additional supplemental lore that's related to the world of Fay Haven. Right now there's been one post, it's called a personal account of a Gristwood Traveler and you can click on read more and it will take you to that post and you can read this cool narrative about some characters within the world and their experience. So if you do sign up for the email updates, you'll get an email when those new lore posts are made. Abby writes so, she does an awesome job with them, so be sure to check those out and keep an eye out as new ones are posted. Moving on, we can go back to the drop down menu and move on to the game rules. On this page, we have a few different tabs that we can look at, including combat, classes, magic, role play, etc. We're going to start off by looking at the combat rule set, which is a good place to start. It starts off with a section explaining what information is contained on this page. Then we have a bunch of drop downs that split up our rules into different categories. We have game style, safety, striking, hit points, wounded, downed, unconscious, dead. And this page explains the difference between those terms and game. Healing, armor, weapons, shields, and allowed weapons. There's a lot of information in here and you'll be sure to want to read all of it, um, but it's organized in such a way as to be able to help you to go back and refresh yourself pretty quickly on individual rules. All right, so going back to the game rules tab, let's click on classes and take a look. So the beginning of the classes page gives a little blurb on what universal abilities that any player at Fate Haven has, including what kind of weapons they can use, etc. And then after that, it gives the various classes in the game and what unique abilities they possess. So we have warriors, we have healers, we have mages, and we have rogues. So when you're creating your character, you'll need to select one of these classes and they each have really cool and unique abilities that serve a specific purpose and role within the game, which make you valuable to other players in the world. Going back to the rules page, we're gonna move on to the next section, which is magic. One of my specific roles on staff was to help design the rule set and magic system for this game. So I am really excited to share it with you guys. Our first drop down tab explains the history of magic in the world. 
This explains that there are two different types of magic, that is wild magic and arcane magic. The next section is called choosing your path. And in this game, as a mage, you will either choose between being a wild mage or an arcane mage. And this section has some information on that. The next section explains how spells work mechanically within the game. The next section discusses your spell book. This is an aspect of our game that I'm really excited about. Each mage will have their own spell book where they will write down new spells that they learn within the game. Their collection of spells will grow as they continue to learn and become a more proficient mage. The next section discusses spell cards and how to indicate that you are casting a spell. A very interesting aspect to the magic system in this game is the mage stones. Each mage carries with them a pouch that we will provide that contains a certain number of success stones, which would either be blue or green depending on which school you pick, and one failure stone, which will be red. Each time a mage casts a spell, they will reach into the pouch and reveal the stone. If it is a success, the spell goes off as planned, and if it is a failure, it fizzles. I'm a big fan of this aspect of the game because it adds some risk and drama to casting a spell. The next section gives a pretty detailed breakdown of the steps required to cast a spell. Lastly, we have a few examples of spells for both the arcane and the wild mages. These are just a few of the spells that are out there in the game, but these are to give you a good idea of the flavoring around the different schools of magic. All right, so going back to the rules page, let's take a look at the roleplay rules. This page discusses the rules and guidelines related to roleplaying with other players within the game. We want to make sure that the actions of our players create a positive and uplifting environment for all of the players within the game and within our community. This first section discusses some various hand signals that you can use during roleplay to convey messages to other people. For instance, if you need to leave a situation or uh, you're feeling uncomfortable with a certain level of roleplay or to do a check-in with another player to make sure that they are feeling comfortable. And these various uh, hand signals are a way to do that without necessarily breaking the immersion of the scene for you and the players around you. The next section discusses abusive language in the context of LARP, what that looks like and how to avoid that to ensure the safety of all of our players. Then the last section discusses playing to lift. Playing to lift is a concept that is pretty well known within the LARPing community and this breaks that expression down and gives some overall information on how to build others up and uplift others within the community and within the game. So those are just a taste of a few of the different rule sets within the game. There's a lot more information on questing, economy, NPCs, and things like that. So I would encourage you to go check those out when you have the chance. And finally, our last tab of the menu is the event information. First, we have the tickets tab. Right now that says that tickets are coming soon, so subscribe below to receive updates. We'll have more information on that very soon, so be sure to keep an eye out on that. Next, we have the lodging tab. This gives information on all of the various accommodations relating to lodging within the game. This is an overnight camping game, so there are various options to go about camping within the game. There is in-game camping, which is camping that takes place in the in-game area of the game where immersion is maintained. And this in-game camping is with period appropriate uh, medieval style tents. So that's canvas and wood and rope, things like that. And if you do get an in-game tent, you'll need to uh, submit that for approval by staff as well, kind of like your garb. Next, it discusses the cabins that are located at the venue. There are 10 small cabins that are located in the in-game area as well with eight different beds that are bunk beds. And each of those 10 cabins can be rented individually. Definitely a great option if you want to stay in the in-game area and you don't have an in-game tent, or if you just want a dry place to sleep on an actual mattress, that is very valid as well. Then we have some information on out-of-game camping. So that's in the area of the game that is separated from the in-game area. 
that is uh, visually blocked off from the in-game area as well. So you can use modern tents and modern camping equipment there. And lastly, it discusses some off-site lodging, including hotels, Airbnbs, RV camping, etc. Moving on, we have a page on food and drink at the event. So in this event, tickets include five full meals, starting with dinner on Friday, October 4th. This shows the menus for the meals at the event, starting with Friday night's dinner, looks delicious. We got smoked pork, mashed potatoes, salad, etc. Then we go on to Saturday breakfast, Saturday lunch, Saturday dinner, and finally Sunday breakfast. Good food is very important to us, so we wanna make sure that you guys are eating well at the event and that our food helps contribute towards the immersion of this fantasy world. If you have any allergies or dietary restrictions, when you purchase your ticket, make sure to indicate that and then we can connect with you and figure out what all we can accommodate for you on that. The volunteering page is still under construction, but that will have information on the various ways to volunteer for the event in exchange for some discounts on your ticket price. That'll include things like help with setup or teardown or NPCing. So that's all of the information on the website as of now, but we do plan to add more information on a continuing basis. We're hoping to add a new player guide very soon with some basic information for new players or new LARPers. We'll also have an FAQ page as well. And as we add more information to the website, we'll send you guys those email updates so you can be sure to stay up to date on all the info. All right guys, so I know that was a lot of information, but hopefully that gives you a good place on where to start to go to find answers to questions related to this game. In addition to the website, make sure you go check us out on Instagram and Facebook where we post a lot of pictures and other content related to the game. Yes, and definitely do join our Discord. As I mentioned earlier, that's a really cool community with a lot of people that are excited for this event and are excited to help you out and help you with uh, you know, any questions you might have related to costuming or projects or anything like that. And you can also ask us questions. We are in there and we're usually pretty quick about answering questions related to the game in that Discord. The link to that Discord will be in the description below, so please do join. Tickets for this event are going on sale soon, so make sure to follow for updates on that. And I would really encourage you to get your ticket soon. Yes, absolutely would encourage you to come to this event. We've barely scratched the surface, honestly, with what we've talked about today on all of the cool things related to this event. We're working on a lot of projects. Some of those are secrets. Uh, to the players, whether that's, you know, creatures within the Gristwood or cool things that are going to happen, quests, stuff like that. So we can't wait for our players to get to see those. And I hope that you guys will join and become a part of that. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you like and subscribe and we will see you in the next one. Adventure awaits. Matthew, you want to give us your best dramatic read? Good heavens, no. <laughs> I can't read that. Uh, yeah. Haven LARP is an immersive fantasy experience held in the Midwest when you can step into Fay. <laughs> <laughs>